Come on, I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Join me, lift up your hands and just thank God again this morning. Let's together appreciate him. What a joy again to be counted among the living. Lift up your voice if God has done anything well for you. Magnify his name. Faithful God, we thank you again this morning. We appreciate you again for the privilege you have granted to every one of us to be in your presence today. Lord, again, speak to our hearts. Minister to every life here. Let none of us return the same way we have come. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone who is trusting God for a miracle this day, say louder, amen. amen. Help me shake your neighbor. Tell the neighbor, neighbor. Come on, do it to some life. Say neighbor. Shake that neighbor properly. Say neighbor. Something good will happen to you today. Uh, you may turn to the next neighbor with a smile. Shake that neighbor. Say neighbor. Something good will happen to you today. Now, I, I want you to beat your chest and say myself. Come on, say loud and say myself. Something good must happen to me. And when will that be? Come on, when will that be? Shout it loud. When will that be? As you have decreed, it is established unto you. Give Jesus the biggest hand you can this morning. Come on and let's give him a shout. Come on, let's give him a shout. Come on, the walls are coming down. Let's give him a shout. Chapters are opening up. Let's give him a shout. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' matchless name, please be comfortably seated. Glory to God. I'm always blessed every time I have the privilege to come here to share with kings and queens in Hebron. And what a joy again God has given me this privilege as approved by the Chancellor to be here this morning. And I'll be sharing very briefly on understanding divine direction. Please listen very carefully. Understanding divine direction. Two quick scriptures. Proverbs 16 and verse 12. I beg your pardon. Proverbs 16 and verse 25. And Proverbs 14 and verse 12. We take Proverbs 16, 25 first. It's the same thing. The Bible says, there is a way that seemeth right. It looks good. It looks workable. It looks sound. There is a way that seems right unto a man, a young man, a young woman. It looks good. But the end thereof are the ways of death. And it is repeated verbatim in Proverbs 14 and verse 12. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. It looks good. It appears sound. But that's not God's direction. If you have the Amplified Translation, I'd like to point something there. He said, there's a way that seems right to a man. And watch this. It appears straight before him. That means when the man makes his own personal judgment, this is the best way to go. It appears straight before that man, but at the end of it, at the end, it is a way of death. Not every way is God's way. That's why we need divine direction. Not everything that looks good is actually good. That's why we need divine direction. And please hear me and hear me well this morning. Thank God for where you are. Thank God for where God has lifted every one of us. But never forget that no one ever outgrows the need for divine direction. No one. No man, no woman ever outgrows the need for divine direction. 
So as long as you and I remain on the earth, we need direction. We need direction. Why? Life is a jungle, battlefield, filled with uncertainties for the world. Many are living lives of frustration because the things they thought were the right things to do never brought out the right outcome. They used their intellectual prowess to define the steps to take and it ended in a crash. Many are frustrated today. Life is a battlefield. Life is a jungle. We need divine direction. Life is an adventure. It is not a destination. It's an adventure. I noted something when the reflection team, please celebrate reflections for me this morning. They, they, your tempo has not dropped. I felt like standing up to join you this morning. And they made a statement in the ministration. He said, life is like a tour. It has so many faces. This life you and I are living is an adventure. It is not a destination. Your stay in Covenant University is a face in your journey of life. I saw one, the 500 level uh, young lady came to testify. Amazing testimony. That's a face. Five years in Covenant University is a face. A time will come. You will step out of Covenant University. Another face. Life is an adventure. It unveils chapter after chapter. Face after face. You all, we all need divine direction. Hear this. Nothing beautifies the adventure of destiny like divine guidance. Nothing. Nothing beautifies the adventure of destiny like divine guidance. Divine guidance. You know what vision does? Vision unveils destination. But divine direction shows the process that guarantees arrival. Vision reveals destination. Several times we celebrate vision. This is what God has said to me. This is what my tomorrow holds. We celebrate vision. Thank God for vision. But you know what divine direction does? It unveils to you and I the process. The step-by-step -step process to the end. Unfortunately, the greatest challenge of this generation is impatience. Many young people today, we are too desperate to get into the future. I often say that many young people today are victims of the now syndrome. The now syndrome. I want to be great now. I want to buy that house now. I want to build that business now. Now. I want to get married now. I want to have five children now. We are victims of the now syndrome. The now syndrome. Impatience. Towards arriving at the future that God has ordained. And that's why many young people go ahead of God. And they end up in frustration. But it's my prayer for everyone within the sound of my voice. You will never take a wrong step. Come on, say an amen like a true believer. Yeah. I said, you will never take a wrong step. Yeah. Thank God for speed, but speed is of no essence when you are moving in the wrong direction. Thank God for speed, but speed holds no value when you are headed in the wrong direction. Isaiah 45, from verse 1 to 3. Thus said the Lord to his anointed to Cyrus, whose right hand I am holding. May God hold your right hand. Come on, say an amen like a believer here. I say, may God hold somebody's right hand here. 
Now see what happens when God is holding your right hand. I will subdue nations before you. I will lose the loins. Lose the loins of kings, not peasants. That means I'll be stripping men and women of authority, of their authority and possession because of you. To open before you the two-leaved gate and the gate shall not be shut. Watch this, verse 2 quickly. He said, I will go before you. God will go before somebody here. All the days of your life, God will be the one leading you. Come on, say amen if you receive that. I said, God will be the one leading you. You get out of Covenant University, before you get to the NYSA camp, God is already there waiting for you. And when God goes before you, watch what will happen. He will make the crooked places, what? Straight. So people cannot explain why things are working for you, but there's someone ahead of you taking the lead. He makes the crooked places straight. And just in case there's a gate of brass before you, because he's the one in front, you know what he does? He breaks the gates of brass into pieces. So things that stand as barriers for others, before you get there, you just walk inside them. Somebody here, you'll be getting a job from your NYC days. I, I'm not talking about casual jobs. I'm talking about mega jobs. There are some of you, by the time you are just getting into camp, you have started that business, that big organization that will be employing people before you finish NYC. Because there's someone leading you. So he breaks the gates of brass into pieces. And he cuts in sunder the bars of iron. And you know what he begins to do? He begins to give you treasures. Treasures. Treasures of darkness. And the hidden riches of secret places. So what others struggle to get in 10 years? Within 6 months, God has placed it in your hand. Come on, are you hearing what the word is saying? That's what happens when God is the one leading you. Be careful of the social media craze today. Many of the things we see, most of them are fake. Have you ever wondered why even when you post pictures, you don't post your ugly ones? Come on, help me. You know I'm saying the truth. I saw some people snapping pictures when I was coming. And then they'll go and check. No, this one is no good. This one is no good. When it's time to post for the world to see, you put the best one out there. So many young people today have put themselves with high blood pressure. Why? I must make it. Now, now, now. I told you the story. I don't know if it's here. I said the story of a man who had moved to the U.S. And I was pastor in the U.S. then, I think in 2017 or 18. I can't remember exactly that year. This guy just came into the U.S. barely two months or so, or a month. And he came to the church. This guy was yet to find his feet. Nothing. And he went and stood beside one of my vehicles and he snapped by the driver's side. By the, he couldn't enter, so he posed by the driver's side there. And he took a picture. And he posted it on Facebook. You need to see comments. Oh boy, God don't bless you. Oh boy. All kinds of comments. All kinds of comments. And here is response. We thank God. Oh. We thank God. Oh. So he was claiming the glory and projecting a fake life. Now imagine somebody he left in Michael The last month before he left. Now seeing him posing before a very fantabulous vehicle. And he said, ah, see what Johnny has gotten in two months. If I would trek to the America, I would trek there. But he was projecting a fake life because of the now success syndrome. May none of us end up as victims. Where God is taking you and I is still very far. You will get there. Come on, say an amen like a true believer. But let God take the lead. Let God do what? Take the lead. Now hear this. When God shepherds your life, 
goodness and mercy automatically follows you. That's all that follows. When God is the one shepherding your life. When he's the one shepherding your life, goodness and mercy becomes the outcome. But divine direction is communicated principally through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And this we need to understand. If we must continue on the right path of life, you and I need the help of the Holy Spirit. God guides the believers today principally through the ministry of the Holy Ghost. In John chapter 16, verses 12 and 13, he said, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot comprehend them yet. You can't catch them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, Speaking of the Holy Ghost, is come. He will guide. He will guide. He will guide. Please hear this. You can't guide yourself into your tomorrow. Let the Holy Ghost guide you. Man at his best cannot guide himself into his future. Because only the one who knows the way can show the way. Let the Holy Ghost guide you. Let him guide. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 14, it says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these ones are the ones called the sons of God. They, they subscribe to the leading of the Holy Ghost. So he shows them which turn to make. He shows them which move to make. How we need the help of the Holy Ghost. Because not every open door is God's door. Our father said this oftentimes. Many are traps in disguise. One lady made a very dangerous step when I was pastoring on the foreign field. She had a fantastic job. And all of a sudden, another one came. She, it was so good, so juicy that she refused to ask God, should I jump from where I am to the new place? I said, Pastor, the salary is bigger. Oh. Ha! I'll be any so-so dollar per hour. Where I am now, I'm on 25. This one is like 40. Ha! No, this is God. This, I said, have you prayed? Say, leave prayer. This is God. And without hesitation, she jumped. One month Two months, three months, the business closed. She had left where she had worked for almost 10 years that she was already entitled to benefits almost for life for something that looked good. There's a way that seems right to a man, to a woman. But the end, they are the ways of destruction. You will never take a wrong step. Somebody shouting a proper amen. So the Holy Ghost is the believer's GPS in life. He guides us on the steps to take. He shows you and I the turns to make. Because he knows the end from the beginning. No man knows the end. Don't pose like you know it. Let the Holy Ghost, who was from the beginning, who is to the very end, who is the believer's GPS? Let him guide you. Many of us know the benefits of GPSs. We have used them at some point in finding direction. There are certain places and addresses they give you, no matter the anointing upon you, you will never find it. But once you put the punch, the key of the address into the GPS, it tells you, go forward, keep moving. Two kilometers. At this junction, take a right turn. And keep moving. 100 meters, take a left turn. And you that is a stranger in that land, you are moving like a man that knows everywhere. Why? GPS. So it is with the Holy Ghost. He gives direction to the believer who allows him to. He said he will guide you unto all truth. 
He will guide. He will guide. He will tell you to take the job or to leave it. He knows the end. He will show you the right step to take concerning that business. He knows the end. You don't know it. Don't post like you know it. May I pray for everyone? Join me, lift up your right hands. Come on, lift up your right hands. All the days of your life, may the Holy Ghost hold you by that hand you are lifting. I said, may the Holy Ghost hold you by that hand you are lifting. And may he continue to guide you into your glorious tomorrow. He's the one to tell you, don't marry that man. He's a dangerous man. He's the one. He's the one to tell you, hey, caution. That sister looks good. She looks like wife material. She's knife. It's not wife. It's knife. So be careful. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows your far reaching and your down sitting. Let him guide you. Let him guide you. Let him guide you. Now quickly, what are the requirements for divine guidance? Let's run through this. God does not just lead just anyone. There are fundamental requirements we must possess to enjoy divine guidance. Number one, and this is very crucial. If God must lead you and I, one must be meek. If God will ever guide you and me, we must be meek. Only the meek can be guided by the Lord. Only the meek. Only the meek. Only the humble can be guided by the Lord. Psalms 25 and verse 9 and verse 12. Watch what he says. The meek. The meek. The meek will he guide in judgment. The meek will he teach his ways. The meek. He said, what man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. So when a man and a woman begins to think that you know everything, God leaves that one alone. When pride gets in the way and no one can caution you, no one can guide you, God said, leave that one. Leave that one. Leave that one. Unfortunately, many young people today, one of the things we suffer from in our generation is the pride hold, the grip of pride. Technology everywhere. The world is on a fast pace. Things are happening faster than the previous generation. So the tendency to be unteachable is there. The tendency to be uncorrectable is there. No one can talk to me. I'm a man of my own. Everyone looks too small to correct. And God says, if, if everyone is too small to correct you, I'm also too small to correct you. The meek will he guide in judgment. The meek will he show his ways. So you desire greatness in life. Meekness is a non-negotiable virtue. You desire greatness in life. Meekness is a non-negotiable virtue. Non-negotiable. You can't contest it. See the man Moses. The greatest in his time. His qualifier. Numbers 12 and verse 3. What made Moses end as the greatest was his meekness. Hear what the word says. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Very meek. Very great. Very meek. Very great. Deuteronomy 34 verse 10. He became very great. Very meek. Very great. No prophet matched up to Moses. Very meek. Very great. God's protocol has not changed. If greatness is your desire, meekness is a non-negotiable requirement. James chapter 4 verse 6. The Bible says God resists the proud. Ooh, 
one of the greatest undoing of any man is when God begins to resist you by himself. If other men resist you, God can intervene and rescue you. But when God resists a man by himself, that man is helpless. But hear what the Bible says. When God finds a proud man or a proud woman, he said, I resist him by myself. But he gives more grace to the humble. Ten years ago, God's servant called me one day at the church secretariat. Ten years ago. I was privileged to be the church administrator then and he called me. And he said, Steve, I said, yes, dad. He said, do you want to be great? Ha. Who doesn't want to be great? I said, ah, yeah, definitely, sir. He said, remain small in your own eyes. I said, thank you, sir. That statement stuck in my spirit since that time one decade ago. He said, Steve, you want to be great? I said, yes, sir. He said, remain small in your own eyes. Not the eyes of people, your own eyes. I've discovered that what makes people proud is when they feel they are too big for this. Oh, do this. Who are you to talk to me? Remain small. That is a clear definition of meekness or humility. It is the capacity to remain small in your own eyes. Remain small. Remain small. Kill the spirit of pride. Every time God sees pride in the heart of a man, he backs away from that person. And please listen to this. Pride is not a function of what a man has. There are some very proud beggars. Proud. In the year 2014, on our outreach, I met a man. He is he's an Okada man. So I began to preach to him. He lives just outside Canaan Land Fence. I began to preach to him. I said, God can change your life. God loves you. God. He stood like this, was looking at me like, what, is, what are you saying? So, but I made up my mind that this one, I will follow him anywhere. By force, you must settle down with God. This man looked at me like I was not making sense. I kept on. I got his number. I will call him. Come to church. He's just behind your house. He said, I will try. I'll, 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 I'll see what I can do. If you hear him speak English, it's an Okada guy. Yo. I'll see what I can do. So, in 2015, I went on foreign mission. And I came back in 2019. And I remember that man and I went after him again. And after much persuasion, he agreed to come to church. This man came. And after the service, I told him I'll meet him. I'll see him after the service. And I saw him after the service. I was so excited to see him. I said, hey, how was the service? Mr. Samuel, how was the service? He put his hand in his pocket. He said, well, he was shaking his head like, well, it was okay. Bishop tried. Bishop tried. True story. This is how my mouth opened. Ah. Lenwe. Bishop tried. Ah. Bishop tried. Bishop tried. Oh, Kada man. And his hand was in his pocket. He paused. Bishop tried. Ha. Ah. I said, okay. At that point, I almost gave up. So I said, okay. It's good to see you. He said, well, Pastor. Um, I've been meaning to talk to you. So I became the humble one. Then I said, okay. What is it? He said, you see, you know I had an Okada in 2014. I said, yeah. He said, well, the Okada is no more working. In my mind, I said, it will never work. It will never work. So I was just thinking if um, you could probably buy me an Okada or... or... <laughs> Bishop tried. Bishop tried, that bishop tried, we'll buy you that Okada. My flesh was telling me to tell him something. My spirit said, be calm. So I looked at the young children he brought. I checked what I had in my wallet. I blessed those children. I said, God bless you. So we'll talk. And as he was going, I did au revoir. This case is almost beyond remedy. Pride is not a function of just what a man has. It is a spirit. 
Anyone under that siege today, you are rescued in the name of Jesus. You want to go far in life, remain small in your own eyes. Number two, quickly. One must study to be quiet. Requirement for divine guidance. We must study to be quiet. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 11. And that ye study to be quiet and do your own business. Mind your business. That's what that scripture is simply saying. Mind your business. Don't be a busy body on other people's matter. Mind your business. Focus on where God has called you and pursue. Too many people are busy analyzing other people's lives and they leave their own behind. Did you see what that kind of clothes that sister is wearing? She's not born again, no. She's a Gentile. Can't you see it? My sister, tell me something. That brother, you know Brother John? <laughs> All the one he comes to do on the altar is fake. I know him. The other day he was cutting eye for me. Study to be quiet and do your own business. Focus on your focus. Face where God is leading. Matthew chapter 7 verse 5. He said, thou hypocrite. Jesus was dealing with them. He said, you are hypocrites. You are hypocrites. You are judging other people. You are backbiting them. God cannot lead a backbiter. Thou hypocrite. First cast out the beam out of your own eyes. He said, and then you will see clearly to cast out the moat out of your brother's own. I've come to discover that those that haven't backbite others, they are doing worse than them. It's just that Nemesis has not caught up yet. The word is simply saying you want God to guide you. Study to be quiet and do your business. Before I used to be very concerned about what people used to say. Oh, he said this, this, ja, 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 they are back, back biting you. At a point, the Lord had to caution me that, hey, you know why they can backbite you? It's because you are in front. Come on, are you catching what I'm saying? Backbiters are always at the back. So when you are making progress and they are calling you names and gossiping you, it's good. Celebrate it. Because they are at the back. And they are saying you're back. That's why they are called backbiters. So they are biting from the back, but they can't touch you. Come on, are you hearing that? They are backbiting from the back, but they can't touch you. So these days, they say, Pastor, see if you did this, I'm happy. I say, yes, I did it. Oh, you bought this? Yes, and I'll buy another one. Just wait, you'll soon see some things very soon. I'll bring it around your campus. It's coming. It's coming. Newer ones. Better ones. May God keep taking you forward. Say an amen like a true believer. Quickly, what are the proofs of being divinely guided. What are the pros? What are the benefits? Number one, you assess supernatural insight. Supernatural insight. Isaiah 48, verse 17. Thus said the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, we teach thee to profit. I lead you by the way that thou shouldest go. I teach you to profit. So if you want to profit, stick with me. You want your life to continue to produce profits, not losses. Stick with me. So when you find a man and a woman that the life is producing results in the kingdom, such is being led by the spirit of God. Hear this. When God guides, it shows. When God guides, it shows. Psalm 32 verse 8, I will instruct thee and teach thee. 
I will instruct, God cannot be your instructor and your teacher and you will not make profit. Every time God guides, he unveils divine secrets. Who? The man Job. The greatest man in the East. Job chapter 1, verse 3. He was the greatest. But what was his secret? God was guiding him. Job 29 and verse 4. As I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of the Lord was upon my tabernacle, God was showing me secret. And his secret is only available to those he's guiding. So when God takes you by the right hand, he begins to show you deep things that others have no access to. Your life is commanding results. They may be grumbling, but they can't stop it. May I pray for everyone here today. All through your lifetime, you will never lack results. Say an amen like a true believer. So when you're divinely guided, you have access to supernatural insight. Number two, it stirs up supernatural zeal. Supernatural zeal. Unquenchable zeal. You are driven beyond the normal. People can't understand why you move the way you move. Jeremiah 20 and verse 9. I said I will not make mention of him, nor speak anymore in his name, but his word is in my heart like a burning fire. Burning fire. Burning fire. I close with this. The benefits of divine guidance. The benefits, the benefits, the benefits of divine guidance. One, when God leads you, he protects the lead. When God leads, he protects. When God leads, he protects. Exodus 23 verse 20. Behold, I send my angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring you to the place I have prepared. There's a place God has prepared for every one of us here. May you get there. I just prayed a very powerful prayer for some. May you get there. I said, may you get there. When God leads, he protects. He protects. He defends. Number two, when God leads, he walks with the lead. He walks with the lead. He's walking with you. He's walking with you. He's walking with you. Come on, I said he's walking with you. Because he's the one leading you, he's walking with you. So it's not just by your energy. There's a supernatural ability at work for you. So what others struggle to get is just falling on your laps for free. They can't understand why things are working at that pace. They can't decipher what things are working sharp, sharp for you. But there's a supernatural being working with you. Lift up your right hands where you are. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice today. In the name of Jesus Christ, God will lead you all the days of your life. All through the remaining days of your life in Covenant University, God will be the one leading you. When your time is up and you get into the other part of the world, your NYSC, your working life, God will hold you stronger. No one here will take a wrong step. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jump on your feet, shout the loudest, amen. Come on, jump on your feet like soldiers of Christ. Jump, 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 jump. And shout the loudest, amen. Come on, Covenant University, your amen should shake the chapel. I said your amen should do what? Shake the chapel. God will be leading you all the days of your life. No one within the sound of my voice will take a wrong step. May I pray for the girls here? You will not marry wrong. Some of you didn't hear me well. You will not marry a wrong man. No matter how great your destiny is, if you go with a Jonah, the tendency of not reaching there is there. The tendency of not reaching there. May destiny or may life not join you with a wrong spouse. For the men, you will not marry wrong also. God will take you by the hand. He'll be leading you step by step. Guiding you face by face. In your career, in your business, he'll be the one guiding you. And so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name.